Welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. Today we have a very special guest because I'm a client of hers and she's a client of mine. So that's how cool this episode is going to be, okay? I also want to remind you that you're listening into this podcast right now because you're obsessed with growth. You're not trying to maintain the status quo. You're trying to get to that next best level of you. And I just came out with a brand new coaching program that I am so excited about because it actually used to be a bestseller back in 2019, but I was going through some personal stuff at the time and I needed to like kind of just take a pause on this program. And I've decided to bring it back with a whole new name. It's called Crafted Entrepreneur Coaching and I'm making life coaching affordable to all. I'm so freaking pumped about it because, you know, most people don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to invest in getting a life coach, but I believe so much in coaching that when you have that one-to-one support, you can go so far. So check it out over at kaylacraft.com forward slash coach and we can get you started today with a brand new coach to help you really make your dreams a reality. So we're talking about making dreams a reality with my guest today, Jessie O'Donnell. She is the founder of Shine Candle Co. and the founder of Jessie Shine Method, where she teaches people how to become business owners by creating their own product and selling it either online or in person as well. So, you know, it's basically a consumer product kit, right? How do you say it? CPG, something like that? (laughs) Okay, so I'm so excited to welcome Jessie to the show. Yay, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. And I forgot to add, you're a mom of two. Mom of two, yes. Jackson and Wes, my little boys. I mean, I feel like I always see you online with them. And so it looks like you're like naked right now. Because you're like, where are your kids? (laughs) Yes, I know. They're always with me everywhere I go. And you've really built a whole business like with, you're not lying. Like she hosts events everywhere and she has the kids with her. Yeah, so that was like one of the main things is I wanted to well, initially make money more from home or being home with them. I didn't want to have to pay someone else to Mm -hmm. raise them. I'm basically going to work to pay someone else. So it made more sense for me to try to start making money from home, which is why I started researching and kind of figuring out what I could do with that. I don't know how I came across candles. I just stuck with it. I loved candles. And when I started doing research, I was like, that would be fun and creative. And it just kind of, yeah, went from there. So I want, I I know your story, but I want people to hear your story but first what's the most you've ever made in a month selling candles one month the most I've ever made was 9800 that's amazing right so I just want to show that possibility to people listening in because you've just started a new business where you're coaching other people how to do that same thing yeah right yeah because I always say that's like the quickest way to get to where you want is find somebody who has what you want Mm -hmm. most people want to be making ten thousand dollars a month Mm -hmm and find out how they did it. Yeah. And you've really laid it out for them totally. in this blueprint, right? Yes. In the Jesse Shine method. Yeah. So let's go before, back to when you were, what you did before. I know what you did, but mm-hmm. what did you do when you found out you were pregnant? So when I found out I was pregnant, I was bartending and serving full time. And I was basically- What kind of place? Were you, I, I've never asked you what restaurant. So Blue Water Grill in Newport. Oh, yeah, that's I like was, a nice. It's nice. It's like a nicer fish house yeah. restaurant. Um, but yeah, I was there for, at the time, I think it was- four or five years. So Mm -hmm. I'd been there forever. I was a server before that, bartender before that for basically since I was like 18. So it's all that I ever knew. And then, yeah, once we found out I was pregnant, I, that's where I went with Shine. So, okay. But I know it wasn't that easy, right? You're like, yeah. "Yeah." And then I just decided to start a candle business. I know. (laughs) So, so I, I mean, we, let's go into this mindset. You're working as a bartender. So you're slinging drinks over here. Yeah. And you're making money mainly on your tips, I'm assuming. Yes. Right? Yes. So income is kind of variable. Mm -hmm. You're on your feet Mm -hmm. eight hours a day, Mm -hmm. right? And then your boyfriend, what did he do? So he's a barber. um, And I can't remember if at the time he was working for someone. No, you know what? COVID had just hit. So he was like trying to find work, working out of the garage. Um, We were just both kind of like, what are we going to do? And that was also a huge help because I kind of focused in and was able to, you know, Mm -hmm. do the research that I needed to teach myself all the skills that I needed and just basically teach myself everything about the industry. How much money did you have to have to start making candles? So I started it, like I said, when COVID started. So we were getting all this extra money that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So I basically, like any money that I come into, I don't, I'm like, yay, new shoes or whatever. You know, I'm like, where can I use this? That's going to like really benefit me and like get me 
to you the have next a, step. That, a healthy mindset. Most people go, oh, I'm going to buy the new shoes. You're like, no, how is this going to propel me forward? Yeah. So you did what the opposite of what most Americans did during that time, which mm. is they spent it on the crap they didn't need, mm. you know, yeah. to impress people they don't know. Yeah. And you said, I'm going to start my business with yeah. it. That's, and that's really what it was for. Mm-hmm. It was to help people get ahead in that way. Yeah. So he was a barber. You got extra money to start the candle business. Yes. So I used some of it basically just to get the necessary tools, like the very necessary equipment that I needed to just start making a few at a time. And you just did this in your kitchen, right? Yeah. I was living with my mom at the time. Um, This was, I was, I think six months pregnant. Um, So I was living with my mom and my stepdad at the time. And so I was just doing this all in her kitchen. (laughs) Um, And what was, what was her mindset? Was she supportive? Super supportive. So when I told her, she was like, oh my gosh, it's so funny. I actually was thinking about making soap. So she also started a soap business at the same time that I started the candle business. Um, Okay. So it was just kind of like a thing that we were doing. And then they ended up moving to Tennessee when Jackson was like, three or four months old but so you guys were making you started making candles on your you know kitchen sink were you still waiting tables and like doing bartending at the same time yeah so that was like it was basically what started it started as like a side hustle Mm -hmm. um and so I was full-time still bartending serving I think I was working maybe four or five nights a week and then it just like slowly started to go down and down and down because I was getting just random like random candle jobs these people would reach out to me and be like hey you know how to make candles I'm looking for candles for my business and it wasn't necessarily even for shine it was just like extra side jobs that kept coming in because Mm -hmm. I I had a new skill that other people needed or wanted or you know did they find you through social media so she found me through a website search I think Google actually I created a Google profile I created like basically but these are sm- this is the practical stuff I really want people to take in because most people don't know to do this mm-hmm. right like that the fact that she was searching for something and you had just gotten started and she found you is a big deal so mm-hmm. you created a Google profile mm-hmm. okay how do you create a Google profile so it's basically a Google business just listing your okay. business on Google people don't know how to do that oh okay. right is it free it's free yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. it's free. You literally just have your email and you go and click that you have a business. You want to list it. They do have to verify it by sending a letter to your house mm-hmm. and you just put a little code or whatever. But it's super easy and it's free and it's just easy advertising. Wow. <laughs> okay. So tip number one, you guys, from Jesse is start a Google profile. Yeah. I love that. Business profile. Okay. So you are, you know, getting these people from all over the place kind of asking for your help. And you start to work less mm-hmm. as at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And then what's happening with the boyfriend at the time? Is he starting to get busier as a barber? So he actually also like went full in and opened his own shop here in Newport. So he owns and runs his own barber shop, Calico Jack. And he does that full time and he loves it. And we're, you know, he's he's also not just building the barber aspect of it, but he's also trying to grow the brand part of it, like a men's lifestyle brand. So he's been working on that as well. So it's been super cool watching him just build and grow his business as well at the same time. (laughs) Yeah, but I know that hasn't been easy because you guys, you had one baby, but now you have two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so there's been a lot of transitions happening. Mm -hmm. Um, Talk to me about the mindset of just like continuing to persist. Um, Yeah, so a lot of people are like, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. And I'm like, I don't have a choice. Like to me, when I found out that I was pregnant and I was having a kid, I'm like, okay, I want to be the one raising him. I want to do everything that I want with him. Mm-hmm. Like I want him to have everything that he needs. And so it was like, literally, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just like something that changed inside me. And so I was like, okay, I have to do this. I have to figure something out. And that's, you know, with Shine, how that started. And then after that. Yeah. So you were talking about how like, you know, basically like what I want you to get into here. What's been the hardest thing about building this brand? I think the hardest thing is, you know, doing it all by myself, but knowing like that there's someone there watching me. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's what keeps me going is like, okay, well, I, I can't give up. And it's, I don't want to give up just because I have him and now them. So that's like what keeps me going is basically, you know, I want him to know that you can pretty much do anything that you want to mm-hmm. with little to no help. That was another hard thing. My parents, like I said, they moved. So my dad and stepmom moved to Tennessee when Jackson was two months old. And then the next month, my mom and stepdad also moved out there. 
So we don't have like the help that a lot of people, you know, not a lot of people, but most people, they have their mom or they have, yes. you know, help or a nanny, whatever it may be. We don't have that. And so that's another thing with my business that's nice is I can bring them with me if I absolutely need to. I have like found some help, you know, here and there, but that's just a huge thing is being able to run my business and go and do the events and do, you know, getting into stores and having meetings and stuff like that and bringing them along with me. It's mm -hmm. like huge. So I love that because I see you do these pop-ups in Lido, which is if you're not from Newport, which I know a lot of you guys aren't, but there's this really, it's my favorite spot in town, but they yeah, always do pop-ups and you're always there yeah. selling your candles and yeah. you always have the kids with you. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you make it look fun, you know? And I remember when my kids were your kid's age, I used to do home parties mm -hmm. selling protein shakes, you know, and all the things, but I'd all, I would go to, I travel all over the country doing these home parties and all the kids were always coming with me mm -hmm. and you just kind of figure it out. Like when people, totally. how do you do it? Did you, you, well, you, there's just no other there's option. No I'm choice. not leaving my kids with anybody, <laughs> so they're coming with me. Exactly. You know, and I think it's a mindset mm -hmm. that it's, you know, you don't look for the excuses. You totally. look for how. Exactly. Right. And that's one thing I admire about you is you're very resourceful. You're gritty. You you figured it out as you went along. Why do you think you have that mindset when most people will just give up? Honestly, I don't really know. I think maybe just growing up, um, my mom, she... I mean, she was married, but she was basically a single mom. My stepdad was not very present. He's an alcoholic. And so I just watched her do everything. And so I think that kind of just like rolled off onto me. I, or if that's even a thing. Um, yeah, it was but, modeled for you, right? Yeah, just like to, you know, go after it. Never, you know, give up even, you know, whatever the circumstance may be. You know, Was your was mom always, always positive and... Um, I feel like for the most part she was, yeah, she was always, you know, making sure I had everything that I needed. Um, she was always at my cheer, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. games and competitions and all that. So she was always doing, um, everything that she could to be there for me. And I think that's one thing that was important for me in like passing that on is making sure that I was always there with them yeah. as well. Cause that was modeled for you. Yeah. Now I know sometime in all of this, you found God. Tell mm -hmm. me about that. So he's been in my life pretty much my whole entire life. My dad was a pastor. I met him actually when I was born, he was in prison. So I met him around three years old and he found God. He has like this whole book coming out and everything too right now in about prison? his, he's he's out of prison now. But, but he's did like he find God in prison? In prison. See, I love that. So okay. it's it was actually before that and he'll, he'll tell you it's the little white shed, but that's the name of his book. So he was in, the, in a little shed and you know, he had this experience with God and it basically changed his life. And so when he came out, he was like, I'm gonna be a pastor and he, did and became one and so when I met him at three and um, him and your mom were already not together were, by this point yeah no, okay they, he was already um yeah they were not together when I met him at three she was with my at the time well he became my stepdad he was my stepdad for like 10 years um the alcoholic um but yeah so when I when I met him at three he was already you know into all that and I say all that but you know at, becoming a pastor but for me it's crazy because I didn't realize this until maybe like mm, two or three years ago. I feel like church was my safe space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because when I was at their house, I was really treated horribly by my stepmom. And I was like, I cried every time I had to go over to his house. I cried the whole entire way there. And so like my mom's like, you have to go with your dad. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, but I would always look forward to Sunday church because I knew that I was going home. And that's like, it's really sad, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that is something that I realized just recently. Like that was like my safe space. And that I think for me, that was like pretty much the rest of my life until now. Like that is who he was for me is like my comfort, my safe space. And like, you know, yeah, the one that was like always there for me. And it was just in my whole life. It's yeah, there was never, and I was kind of in and out of it. So like in high school, I got in, you know, I was getting in a lot of trouble and then I was like, I want to get back to God. And so you I knew did. you were falling. What do they call it? Backsliding. Yeah. You knew you were backsliding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, OK, well, I don't even remember how that started again. But I right. was like, you know what? I just I need to start going to this church. We I think we had just moved. And I was like, OK, so I started going to this church and I just got back into it like full I was going to church like five times a week you know like praying it was like my whole life again and then again same thing out again and it wasn't until probably like 
a year before Jackson was born that I was like, I was partying and I was like just doing all the things that I shouldn't be doing. And so I was like, okay, I need to get back into it again. <laughs> and so I started going, you know, going to church on Sundays, even though I was still doing everything I was doing, I was like trying to get back into yeah. it. And then my mom was like, I want to, you know, let's go to this church. And so we started going there together. And since then, it's just like, it's been growing, it's been growing. But then when I had Jackson, that it was that whole like shift like mm -hmm. everything changed and I'm like okay what I'm doing right now is like crazy I shouldn't be doing this you know I don't want to be doing this I'm not happy doing this and so I was like all right I'm just going really all in and I want to really narrow in and focus on my relationship with God and I want to build my business on I want it to be a faith-based business I want shine to be an example for people to be bold and to be themselves yeah. in their faith when at the time like people were I feel like trying to beat it down a little bit mm -hmm. and so for me I was like no I want to do the opposite and I want to show people like hey you don't have to be afraid to be who you are and you don't have to be afraid to believe in God or you know it's important and it's like it's crucial to I think your well-being and your life and the quality of your life so yeah okay so you named it shine because mm -hmm. let your light shine so yeah Is that kind of Yes, it's <laughs> crazy because it's in the same thing. I was like, I was going back and forth between two names and I was like, all right, I want it to be a pretty name associated with light. And so it was Shine Candle Co. and Glow House. And after I had decided on those two, I went to church that Sunday and the sermon was about, you know, rebuilding the engines of influence and business was one of them. And then he had brought up Matthew 5, 16 and letting your light shine. And mm -hmm. I was like, <gasps> Oh, it's a sign. Yeah, it's, it's a sign. shine. This is it. So that's where that came from. And Aww. I just love it. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm hearing from you is there were some times in your life, obviously, that you kind of got caught up in the wrong things, mm -hmm. which I just say that that's like, you know, the devil will use familiar spirits for you, mm -hmm. you know, to keep you coming back. Like you think you're missing out on something and he'll remind you, you know, oh, you haven't really changed. So just come back here mm -hmm. anyway. But once you became a mom, everything shifted for you. Yeah. And I think I hear that from a lot of moms. It's like when you become a mom, your life no longer is about you. Mm -hmm. You know, it becomes about this little human mm -hmm. that is your everything. Totally. You know, we were just talking about it before the podcast. Yeah. Like you'll do anything for your kids. Yeah. Right. And you, your anything is also taking risks being brave mm -hmm. it takes a lot of bravery to go and put your name out there to network with people get these candles in places and now doing what you're doing teaching other people mm -hmm. how to do it right because you're like people are asking me how to do it i'm like start a business yeah. right <laughs> teaching other people how to do it because some people they don't want to do a digital product yeah. you know what i mean they want to be able to have that physical product where they just make something with their hands i know mm -hmm. like chase loves making things with his hands you know you love making things with your hands so it's a beautiful thing there's a need for it mm -hmm. right and you're teaching people how to do it what, what do you think are like why did you choose a physical product instead of a digital product for me it just seemed more comfortable i wanted a way to be creative and um to express my creativity and so being able to create my own product and like now my own fragrances and like that aspect of it was it was like more appealing I guess to me the whole digital aspect I didn't really know too much and I feel like you have to get really familiar with everything that's like you know the back end st sort You're of stuff good at it, which it's what I'm learning now yeah, yeah yeah and because I don't know it and I'm not that good at it that's why I'm like okay now I've done this now I need to move on and learn how to do this part you know because that's also mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. um, but in the beginning I just felt like I knew more about doing the research and teaching myself how to create the product yeah. and that just seemed more comfortable and familiar to me and that's why I chose to do it that way. It, I mean in your mind it wasn't you've never done it before but in your mind that's what the story you created mm -hmm. and I think that's important for people that are listening in right now like all the rages around digital products. If you're mm -hmm. listening to this podcast, you know I talk about digital products but there's also this magical thing that happens with physical products mm -hmm. because People need candles. I mean, how many candles have I bought from you? <laughs> if you drop them off at my house. I mean, I just go through <laughs> candles like crazy. Yeah. And the story is, is I was actually getting my hair done and I found her candles through at my salon, mm -hmm. at Rita's salon. Yeah. And then I think it was like, what, maybe a month later or something like that, you joined one of my programs. Yeah. And I was like, Shine Candle Co. Like, I, <gasps> I have a candle right here. This is crazy. 
like, yeah. I got so excited, you know, and to see like everything that you've created has been so exciting. And I know you're going to help so many people, but I, I hope that people got that permission slip that it's okay. Start with the physical products. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might have to trade some time mm -hmm. to make money and that you, you know, it's not something that lives ongoing, but it's a way you express yourself creatively. Mm -hmm. And there's so many avenues to making money with it. That's one yeah. thing that you've taught me is like your wholesale model that mm -hmm. you follow for my book launch. What do you really want? You made, what do you really want candles? If any of you guys want them, reach out to Jesse. <laughs> they smell so good. Because, well, yeah, we made our own special scent, yes. right? And so that was really fun to like have that whole experience. And you can't get that type of experience with a digital product. You exactly. just can't. Like, it's so fun to be able to light my candle. And yeah. uh, I finally shipped that one. That you're okay. <laughs> I know. She she loves it. She was okay. like, I got it. Thank you. Okay, okay. <laughs> but it's like, it's so special that you're doing that with people. Plus, you've been networking like crazy. Mm -hmm. You're in all these stores, like in Rita's salon. So give me some practical tips for people who um, maybe are a little nervous. They've never had to network in that way to do business with people. They've mm -hmm. kind of just said, you know, I'm gonna keep my head down and focus on me. Mm -hmm. But then when you get into business, you realize how much you need other people. Totally. So give them maybe some practical tips on how to start collaborating with people. Yeah, in the beginning, I was very focused on growing locally because I'm a huge believer in like, your community is like more than enough to take care of you, especially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a new business, people want to support you. And that was like one thing that I learned in the beginning. Like, people are so excited. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. You mm -hmm. created this. Like, yes, if they carry a product, you know, in their store that you have that's similar to yours like there's no reason that they wouldn't want to support someone that was local too so that's like kind of brings you peace like okay yeah that's good but that's a healthy belief <clears throat> most people don't believe that really most people do not believe that oh, no okay <laughs> so that's a gift that you have that mindset you know uh -huh. like that, i just want to point that out if you don't have that adopt that from <laughs> jesse right now okay yes so there was that aspect of it and so local and doing local events, like mm -hmm. just getting involved in local events, showing up at, you know, local grand openings or whatever it may be, just introducing yourself, meeting people, networking is like huge. Um, and I like, I'm like, oh man, I don't want to do it, but you do it anyways, because it's going to, you know, that's what's going to get your name out there is, you know, letting go of that. Ooh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Well, I mean, I don't think a lot of people want to do it, but the fact that you're going to step out there and do it is going to bring rewards you know well and you had your why yeah right it goes back to the why what was your why um my my boys right. you know you gotta you do it and that's mm -hmm. that's another thing like you can't do it for money you have you have to have a, a greater why because yep. if you're just doing it for money you're just gonna get over it and everything you know. in life is hard you know choose your heart you know, mm -hmm. bartending is hard networking and putting on events is hard mm -hmm. choose your heart exactly right you exactly. chose this one where it's like you can really control your economy yeah here and another thing i want to point out about you is your branding You've been like, you're really good at it. Thank How you. did like most people don't have that eye either uh. to just to have that aesthetic. Like, you know what you like, you know how to make it look pretty, mm -hmm. very appealing. Mm -hmm. For those of you guys that are watching this on YouTube right now, you see her box and it just it all just looks so good, especially next to this, this book right here. OK, <laughs> fit in real well. <laughs> it's just aesthetically pleasing. Thank you. So how did you come up with some of the creations that you have? I guess it was just a gift. I just, like you said, I knew exactly what I wanted. I had the vision in my head. It took a little bit of work, like for packaging wise to get there, but went to school for psychology with a minor in marketing. So I had kind of a general idea about the marketing, but I just, you know, it's something that I like too. And I think that's one thing that you have to do is when you're building your brand and you have to keep it close to yourself. That way it's easy to share it with other people. You, you know? believe in it. You believe, you believe in, in it. it, exactly. So I want to point this out because this is interesting. Some people do not have an eye for aesthetics, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, I can't do it. I don't know what looks good. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to put colors together. They just, they don't have that marketing genius within them. Mm -hmm. And would you say that then doing a physical product business is probably not for them? Like something like this? You can learn everything. So I don't, I think that that's just the way that you have to look at it. I don't know how to do this, but... I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to, you know, do the research it takes or 
whatever that may be, whatever it looks like to you to learn it because you can learn anything, you know, even though you're not good at it, if you practice it long enough, you're going to get good at it. And that's one of the things that I do go over in JSM is, you know, marketing and how to, you know, the things to think about and the things to look at and your audience and all that kind Mm -hmm. of stuff. So it's Mm -hmm. definitely, I think even though, oh, it may not be your thing, it can be. And, Mm -hmm. or even if you don't love to do it, you can still learn it and do it. Cause there's a lot of things that I don't love to do in my business, but you do it anyways, because it's part of the business. Yeah. And I think, you know, it comes naturally to you too, Mm -hmm. like to make things look good. And then now coming up with these creative scents and all that kind of stuff, it comes naturally to you. So I think it's something you should pursue and Mm -hmm. follow now for the people listening in right now that maybe want to do something like this, they're like, oh, I need to invest in JSM and learn from Jesse. Uh, we know it wasn't always rainbows and sunshine. Mm-hmm. So tell me about a recent mistake you've made, maybe just in the last couple of months. Because I think it's important that people here, like even though you've you've been successful, you're still making mistakes along the way and you don't yeah. give up. Um, Yeah. So one thing I, I had had someone reaching out to me that I was kind of helping and I kind of, you know. For free. For free. Yeah. For <laughs> I want to point that out. Yeah. Um, and you know, it had gotten really close. She was like wanting to do a similar thing to my box and wanting to do, it was just very similar to what I was doing. And then I come to find that she had gotten her candles into one of the stores that I'm in. And I was like, Ugh. oh man, okay. All right, it's fine, we're fine. <laughs> but I think that my mistake there was that I wasn't nurturing that relationship with the business owner and, you know, making sure that my stock was in there and she would be like, oh, you know, we carry a candle that's really similar, like, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe not. And so that was my mistake and not checking up every few months like I normally do, like I should be doing with all my businesses. That was one thing that I was like, But I like how you're taking radical responsibility because we could go down the rabbit hole of this girl who's the copycat, you know? But I really believe people like that will dig their own grave, you know, because her you know ceiling is your floor mm-hmm. like you're already on to the you're, you're doing more things than that and people always get what they put out mm-hmm. you know so if you're going to do something like that like literally waste your time acting like she was going to buy this program from you and then literally just but that's going to happen yeah. it's just it's out there and so i think the other lesson to learn from that is what don't work for free <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, yeah and it's having boundaries yeah. and just going like hey like i'm not going to answer all your questions here in the dms yes. like i here's my coaching prices mm-hmm. And if you're interested, do it. If not, like definitely one thing that I need to work on and get better at, especially going into this new program, because I feel like a lot of people, that's why, you know, I was like, okay, I need to start something because a lot of people do come to me. Hey, how do you do this? How do you do this? You know, and Mm -hmm. I'm giving away all this information and it's like, oof. Yeah. And you want to help people. So it's, it's, it's natural to give away it all, but it's also like you have to build up that anytime I even take a breath you know, or take a sentence and give it to somebody that's taking time away from my legacy Mm -hmm. for my kids. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it now. Mm -hmm. So I just, I don't even feel guilty about not answering people's questions. It's like, there are links all over the place on how to get a hold of me. You know what I mean? And if you really want it that bad enough, you want your questions answered, you'll buy a program. Totally. Right? Because I got kids' mouths to feed and hockey bills to pay, you know? (laughs) So it is what it is. Exactly. So you got to have that conviction. So I just want to point that out. It's validating that you feel like you want to help everybody. Mm-hmm. But the more and more you focus on what you're building for the boys, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to be easier to be like, oh, here's my link. Yeah. yeah. JSM. Yeah. JSM. Here you go. So I wanted, you texted me the other day. You remember what you texted me after you read my book? Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you want to share that? So it was like, it was literally I think what was it 27 pages in I was like bawling my eyes out oh my gosh I couldn't even believe what was happening so I did the little me exercise and I was like okay I'm really gonna do this I'm really gonna just like sit here I was I think the boys were sleeping Oscar was working late and so I just like really immersed myself in it and I did the exercise you know I saw my house I saw the hallway I saw me sitting on the bed and you know when I asked her you know what what do you want to hear what do you need to hear you know yeah. and um I just literally started bawling as she was like you know I was telling her you you're seen you're loved you're you know all these things just bawling and I was like what is I had like snot coming out like it was yeah. crazy yeah. I was like what's happening to me right now I had to text you right away but it was like after I did all that I just was like I just felt so much better and like about myself in the situation, like my past, I understand a lot of like why I do things, you know, just from reading your book, but just by following you and everything, like really nurturing and understanding that little you has like been super helpful to me. Even 
in parenting the boys too. Yes. Like I, it's really helped me be like, you know, three-year-old me, mm-hmm. you know what it was. Mm-hmm. And you don't remember too many things when you're that young, but it does start super early, I think. And so just being able to look at that now. So when they are older and they do start understanding everything, you know, I can help them and be the best me that I can for them. Yes. That way they could be the best them so that they... Well, your subconscious mind is formed before you're seven years old. So you're like, I don't know if it starts at 10, but it does. Like it, I mean, in the womb, Mm -hmm. we're picking up beliefs, we're picking up feelings and energy. And a lot of us, like I remember when I was, when I had a three-year-old for the first time, I was parenting from my 10-year-old self. Mm -hmm. I hadn't done the work yet. And so I was a much different mom than I am with my third at three years old Mm -hmm. because I had more of the tools Mm -hmm. to not respond you know, but to really parent and nurture totally. in a loving way. And so I'm so proud of you that you're doing that work right now because it is, it's going to make all the difference Yeah, with the boys. Plus also like being faith-based, mm-hmm. you know, and I want to get back to that because I think there's, when we say the word backslide, sometimes like there's a legalism like thing attached to that. It's like, oh, have I been good enough for God? When God doesn't look at that, like mm-hmm. he doesn't tally up the score of how good you were today. Mm-hmm. Right. Like he just wants us to love him yeah. with all of our hearts with all of our beings and naturally when we love God with everything that we have we make better decisions don't you think yeah so tell me the biggest thing that shine is a faith-based company Mm -hmm. but what is the biggest change in you that has come from really like I know you're pursuing God with all your heart right now I see Mm -hmm. you do it Mm oh I just feel like there's the biggest let's see I feel like there's so many things I feel like right now everything that I do I go to him first yes. or everything that I'm going through, I go to him first. Mm-hmm. I before was like trying to control everything myself and I just, you know, I like to have control of things and do it my way. But I'm like, you know what? Like it brings so much more peace and like you make better, like you said, you make better decisions. I think that's the one thing that's really, really been helping me right now because there's a lot of things going on and just having him in that solid foundation has really helped me to make good decisions make I guess act in a better way than I normally would if it was just me I'd be like "Ah," you know all crazy and wild and but having that and just going to him first is like it just brings a lot more peace and I think that's where I'm at right now I just want peace Mm -hmm. and I want to be peaceful for my kids and so I think that is I feel a total difference in you yeah from just like six months ago I think that what it is is you're really in a relationship with God yeah right now before when you looked at church like your safe place which I think church should be a safe place Mm -hmm. but God is our safe place and God is everywhere mm-hmm. so we should feel safe right like totally. we have access to that at any time and so you have really instead of making it transactional mm-hmm. you're more of just like about everything yeah. god god yeah. jesus there's so much power in the name of jesus mm-hmm. right we go to the same church yeah so it's been so fun to even watch you just like just follow that journey on with oceans and yeah you know, those pastors and stuff like that. They're such great leaders. Yeah. But for somebody listening in right now, maybe they're like, I really like, I want to pursue God, but I don't even know what that looks like. What would you tell them? I would say the most important thing would to be to just go after it, find a church and it may not be the first one. You may have to like, you know, do research beforehand, even if you don't feel comfortable, kind of check them out on Instagram, you know, kind of what a lot of churches now will stream their services on YouTube or website, whatever, watch some of their services, but just take the first step and just get in the door. You'll know the right church for you. Like with oceans, I was going to another church and I'm like, yeah, it's great, but like Kayla was saying, it's like, you're checking the box. It's like, you're checking the box. You're going Mm -hmm. to church on Sunday, checking the box. The first time I went to Oceans, I was looking for something like more spirit filled. I wanted to have that close relationship with God. So when I went there, I was like, this is it. Like, this Mm -hmm. is, this is it for me. So I feel like you kind of have that, like, you'll have that encounter with him. When you go there, you're like, oh my gosh, this is it. And then it kind of just all falls into place Mm -hmm. from there. You know, you, it's just the Holy Spirit starts kind of doing things in your life and bringing people into your life and yeah oh I love that <laughs> well it's great advice because what you're telling people to do is just go get involved in mm-hmm. a community right of like-minded people mm-hmm. and we say that in business too but we also need to think about that like spiritually too like going and getting fed is really important and just like having other people around you that believe what you believe mm-hmm. reminds you of your faith when totally. sometimes you get lost right totally. because those times will happen yeah. you know but when you have people in your corner that are like hey you know, what's going on? I haven't seen you at church and they're checking on you. You know, that's the power of being in the body of Christ. Right. So this was such a fun conversation. We learned so much. 
And I'm really excited because, I mean, I pursued you with doing this business, right? I mean, not really, maybe a little bit. You already wanted to do it, but I was like, you have to yeah. do it. Because I don't know of anybody else that's teaching people how to make the you know products, mm-hmm. the physical products. Mm-hmm. And it's like way to get into entrepreneurship with very little startup, mm-hmm. right? You, It's different than network marketing because you're really owning your economy. Yeah. There is you know, there's no limit to Mm -hmm. the amount of money you can make and you control the goods, you know? And so I love that about it. And you can try it out and give yourself a year and then go online, you know? So I love what you're doing. Absolutely believe in it. How can people get a hold of you and follow you? So my Instagram is at the world of Jesse, J E S S I. And then I have Shine Candle Co., which is Shine Candle Company. Um, my website, shinecandleco.com. If you are interested in the JSM, I have a link also in my Instagram bio that they can you know, apply to see if we're a good fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And I mean, do you ship candles like nationwide or what's the, yeah. uh, what's up with yeah, that? Nationwide. Okay. Yep. okay. And if people want to, so somebody might be listening in right now and they have their personal brand. They want to do what I did with my book. Mm-hmm. They just reach out to you. Yeah. And yeah, just email support at shine candle co. Um, and yeah, collaborations are really big. I've done so many custom fragrances, branding on the candle. So all mm-hmm. kinds of, all kinds of stuff. If it's candle related that you need, we can make it happen. <laughs> Any last minute tips, advice, quotes you want to leave with the people? I would say just go for it. Um, if you have an idea of a product in mind, or if you're like, hey, this would be fun, or you know, I have this idea, but you've never done anything about it, start doing the research and you know, just, just try it out. Just go for it. I'm living proof that, you know, just an idea can be successful and you can get what you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on. We'll make sure to link everything up in the show notes. Perfect. Thank Yay. you. <laughs>